Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the observatory by Mozilla. And the observatory is basically a way to test the uh, security of your website. And it's not doing any type of vulnerability assessment, but uh, more what the client um, or client side security would be. So is there secure communication basically between your website or your server and whoever is visiting your site? Um, so again, not necessarily security scanning to find vulnerabilities, but just looking for uh, basic security configurations that we can do to make um, our users a little bit more secure in the way that they actually access the data on our site. So uh, the first I'll talk about their web interface. And if you go to uh, HTTPS observatory.mozilla.org, uh, you can find uh, this uh, just plain website and you can see you can enter a domain here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and enter our, uh, our domain for the university. So global.halem.ac.kr. And then there's a, just a few options here. Don't include the site in my public results. So I'm going to uh, uncheck that even though this video is public. It's okay. And then force a rescan instead of returning cache results. Um, if it's been a while since you've uh, uh, scanned your website, you might want to force a rescan instead of using cache results. And then don't scan with third party scanners if you don't want other um, uh, tools that they're using to be able to access your site. So I'm just going to select don't include my site in public results for now and then click scan me. And what this is doing is going through and scanning my web server um, and all of uh, basically the web server hosted at uh, on my server and checking for all of the different security configurations that a client would normally see. Now I'm going to run through a couple of these. So first off, um, I'm getting a B plus and I'll tell you why uh, why that is. Most of the sites that I scan with this get a, get an F and don't have any of these things set. Um, so I'll talk about a few of them in a second. Um, let's go down to the test scores and you can see basically what they're checking for and they even have more information on each type of uh, criteria that they've set. And basically most of this is setting your web server uh, to have a particular header, some sort of security header. So for example, um, X content type options header set to no sniff. So then this will um, basically go through and try to uh, communicate with your clients in a more secure way. So that way people can't, for example, sniff traffic or um, read your cookies. So there's a cookies option here. All cookies use the secure flag. Now, all session cookies use HTTP only flag. So um, basically this just tells your um, users, the users of your website, what kind of security does this server support and what do we prefer? And most most websites, again, like I said, that I look at don't have any of these headers enabled at all, which means that their cookies are sent um, uh, non-securely, which means anyone could potentially grab those cookies and replay them and pretend to be somebody else. Um, cross ori origin resource sharing or um, I get knocked off because of the content security policy. For example, we can use this to say what scripts or where um, do I allow scripts to run from? So um, right now, because I'm transferring over, I'm using this unsafe inline. Um, I have one script, uh, legacy script, that I can't move over yet, so I have to use this unsafe inline, but I'm working on changing that. Um, so content, content security policies basically say, my website can run code from this location and not other locations, uh, which means that if somebody's trying to hack my site, if they want to try to inject their code, they also have to be coming from the same locations that I allow. It makes it much more difficult to do some sort of um, uh, code injection from uh, from a different uh, source. Okay. Uh, different types of referrer policies. So basically, there's a couple different criteria. I won't talk about all of these. This I in the side uh, gives you all of the information you need about uh, what these are and also how to fix this on your own server if you haven't already. So this website is really good for giving instructions about how to uh, make your, your server or your website more secure for your users. So I highly recommend uh, you test your own website and then look at each of these options and talk about them. Um, and then there's the individual tests, uh, raw server headers. So this is actually the results coming back from my server, what my server is sending to uh, Mozilla in this case. 
And then uh, if we scroll up, you can also see the TLS observatory and then uh, some other ones. So let's look at TLS. And um, this is basically what types of um, uh, TLS or HTTPS certificates are uh, supported. And I'm using um, uh, Let's Encrypt. So um, free and and works works well for me at least. Okay, so... Um, this is actually the web interface to be able to scan a website that you're hosting and see what's wrong and what you can potentially fix um, relatively easily. All of these protections, it took me about 20 minutes to configure everything. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so the website was, was much more secure after that, basically. Okay. Now, what I'm interested in is all of these headers... Uh, or um, all of these configurations are, let's say, relatively standard. They're best practice, more or less now, or at least they should be. So we can assess a website or um, a group of websites really quickly to see how secure they are. So I wanted to do that um, from a program rather than putting every website that I own into uh, uh, the Observatory by Mozilla uh, web interface, right? And they are very good because they offer a couple different ways that we can actually access um, the observatory. And one of them is uh, through this command line utility. This is at GitHub Mozilla HTTP Observatory CLI. Um, and then let's see, command line utility, they are using Docker um, and they have a Docker image that you can download and run directly from that. Or the one that I prefer is the Python option. So um, I'm going to show you today how to uh, install um, uh, from Python, which they tell you in the instructions. So all we have to do is open up a command line. I'm running in Linux right now. So if you're in Windows, and you have pip installed, it should still work. Um, so we want to run pip install uh, HTTP OBS-CLI. So pip install HTTP OBS-CLI. And if I hit enter, it's going to tell me I already have everything installed. Um, this one, I didn't have any issues installing directly from a uh, default install of Ubuntu Linux. Um, if you do have issues, it's probably because, you know, package manager is not up to date or something like that. But um, I've never had any trouble installing from pip for this. And then Whenever you want to run the observatory, you can just type HTTP OBS, um, and then I sometimes do dash CLI, and then this is the uh, tool that we can run. Now, I typed dash dash help, and this gives us the options for the tool, and you can see here there's the debug option, there's rescan. Just like we saw in the web interface, rescan will rescan the website instead of using a cached version. Uh, verbose, um, uh, progress indicator and a little bit more information. Hidden, do not list the scan in the, in the recent scan results. Remember I checked that in the, um, uh, website. And then zero, show test results that don't affect the final score. So this is everything, um, all of the different tests that they can run. Okay. So then let's do an example of this, uh, where we will scan a website. Um, but we will not show it on the web interface, right? So I want to scan a website, but still be relatively um, uh, discreet about it, I guess. I can run HTTP OBS dash CLI dash X because I don't want to show it on the website. And then uh, global.halem.ac.kr. Okay, so now it's going out. And since we just scanned this, it's already been cached. So it should just get back the cached, yeah, cached from nine hours ago. Okay. Um, and then the score is the same. So score 80 out of 100. And then the modifiers are basically um, these uh, refer, uh, refer policy and the content security policy. So now I can see the main things that are affecting my score. Um, and then we could use the... Um, uh, what was the option? The dash Z option to see more. Let me just go ahead and run that real quick. Now, um, the, the Python, um, module. So here's everything that's affecting my score. The Python module or the, the Python version is using an API from Mozilla. So I am actually connecting back to their server. I'm not running this locally. Um, so, uh, just be aware that the Mozilla server is scanning your website. So if you have some sort of uh, firewall or intrusion detection system, you will see scanning coming in. So make sure you uh, don't bl don't block it if you actually want to be scanned. If you do want to be scanned, um, well, uh, yeah, anyway. 
Uh, right, so this is basically how we can get really quickly a score for a particular website. Now, this is useful for a lot of different things. Um, depending on the country that you're in, scanning for um, this kind of information um, might be considered um, suspicious, but I don't think it would be considered illegal in most countries because you are getting uh, public information. You're not necessary. You're just connecting to the website and then looking at the headers that they provide to you. You're not downloading any uh, hidden content or looking, you know, brute forcing directories or anything like that. You're just assessing the content that they are sending back to you intentionally. Um, so I wouldn't consider this any type of hacking. Um, like I said, it's not some type of a aggressive scan. It's literally just a connection and looking how the, the conversation works, basically. Um, so I use, I've used this actually quite a bit. So I thought I would share it today, um, to see, uh, or to show you how, um, you can, quickly get at least a basic security assessment on a website. Um, if all of these things have been set, that means that at least the web server administrator is is thinking about um, security. Um, if none of them have been set, you might want to ask why, uh, especially depending on what the, what the website is. So um, an interesting tool, just something uh, I find useful. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.